after the passage of the contentious UN Resolution 2334 last weekend. The relationship between Israel and several other countries has greatly been strained. Here to talk about his former host country and the fallout from passing the resolution is the former Israeli ambassador to New Zealand, Yosef Livni. Ambassador, thank you so much for coming in. Thank you for having me. So let's start with the big question. Why do you think New Zealand decided to sponsor this bill? Well, New Zealand has been on the record for quite a number of years as wishing to what they call to move forward the peace process. Uh, they've been talking about it, to the best of my knowledge, for at least three years, maybe longer than that. And uh, as everybody knows, for the last two years, there were members of the Security Council, non-permanent members. And basically, even before they were elected, they hinted that they would want to uh, bring forward a draft resolution concerning the peace process. So uh, I guess uh, the feeling there was that it was getting close to the end of the mandate, namely 31st of December, and probably they saw an opportunity uh, to bring forward this project. Of course, uh, they were, they were not the only ones. Uh, there were a number of co-sponsors. They were one of them. And uh, it is consistent with the position that has been espoused by the foreign minister. Now, what has the relationship between New Zealand and Israel been like until now? Basically, they're good relations. Let us remember, we are worlds apart. It takes two days to get to New Zealand. It is very far away. When you judge the relationship, you have to ask yourself, OK, what does it constitute? Trade? We don't have that much trade. We try to promote cultural exchange, maybe academic exchange. But uh, on the whole, it is not like the kind of relationship that New Zealand has, or we have for that matter, with other countries closer to home. The, the New Zealanders have free trade agreement with China. China is a major market for their main export, which is dairy products and meat. Australia. We're on the other side of the world. Our main uh, partners are Europe, the United States, Japan, China. So, so I guess the repercussions of choosing to sponsor this bill weren't really a main concern uh, for the New Zealand representative at the UN. I think, I think that they feel that sponsoring anything that has to do with the peace process, the way they see it, should not be construed as, as taking position, but rather making sure that the issue of the peace process in the Middle East remains on the agenda. Now, when Prime Minister started, you know, Prime Minister Netanyahu, he started calling back ambassadors uh, to reprimand them after the passing of this bill. Were you in any way involved? I know you were formerly an ambassador, but I... No, I wasn't. But <laughs> let me uh, just share with our audience that two years ago, more or less, a year and a half ago, during the campaign in Gaza. Uh, and I came back from Israel. I was here on a holiday. My, my son had his bar mitzvah. But I came back and I found myself facing people calling for my expulsion. Not me personally, but the ambassador. In diplomatic ties, recalling ambassador is one way of showing discontent. There are several ways in which countries can show or express their displeasure with positions taken by other countries. One of them is recalling the ambassador for consultations. Uh, no, as I said, I was not involved, but... But this I, is a method that is being it used. It is a method it. that has been used by other countries as well. And um, <laughs> this is the way the, the government chose right. to express its displeasure. So here's my final question for you. How do you think the relationship between New Zealand and Israel is going to look from now on following what has taken place? Look, uh, New Zealand and Israel are both members of several important associations, the OECD. 
We are founding members of what is known as the Small Advanced Economies Forum, which are several countries that share size, but at the same time, advanced economies. So, obviously the question is, do we want to uh, be annoyed with each other for a long time, or are we going to be satisfied with having stated our positions and move forward in those areas where we have commonality of interests? I don't think New Zealand is a hostile country. I think they have their position, we have our position, and in diplomacy, the best way is to talk about these differences, to see if we can find common ground. And if we cannot find common ground, at least agree to disagree and see where we can move forward on those issues in which we do share a common view. Well, thank you so much for coming in, Ambassador. Thank you. And I guess we're going to just have to see uh, what happens between uh, the two countries. Thank you very much for having me.